Hi, I'm Peter. And my name is Aaron. And Peter, today I have an interesting problem for us to look at. All right, bring it on. So recently I was given the opportunity to get some new flooring in my classroom and I was looking at all the different options, the different patterns, different colors, things like that. And it got me thinking about tessellations. And I thought it would be kind of a cool idea for us to look at the different ways that we can tessellate regular and irregular polygons. Okay, so why don't we start with tessellation as a word. Okay. So what we mean when we say tessellation is we mean tiling and we mean tiling in a repeatable way Mm -hmm. around a single point. So if I were to tessellate some squares, I would have as many squares as I can fit around a single point, and it would have to be repeatable and always the same. Great, and if we go all the way around this point, that's 360 degrees, correct? Right. Yeah. So how can we use that knowledge to prove that we can tessellate these squares around that point? So what we're going to do to do that is look at something called the internal angle of a shape. And okay. we only need one shape for that, so I'll just take these away for now. So with the square, our internal angle is the angle on the inside of any of the corners. Mm -hmm. And so this angle here, because it's a square, is 90 degrees. Yeah. And we have four corners exactly the same, and 90 times 4 is 360. Right. And, and that since is the rule for squares. Okay, and since the square has four sides, that's called a quadrilateral, correct? Yes. And all quadrilaterals have um, a sum of their internal angles as 360 degrees? Exactly. Okay. So we can see here that this is another quadrilateral. It's a little bit different, but still the sum of the internal angles will be 360 degrees. Okay. All right, so that's the rule for squares. And that's an example of tessellation. Okay, so why don't we start with a three-sided regular polygon, such as an, a regular triangle. Okay, so we're going to start with a regular triangle, and I've got some here. And so when we're tessellating triangles, the way that we're talking about tessellations today, we need to have a shared middle point here. And so I'm just going to tessellate them like this, and we'll just keep adding them until we're done. And... There we go. All right, so perfect. It looks like we can tessellate our regular triangles here. So I wonder then how we can use our knowledge of this 360 degrees around our point to prove why these triangles can tessellate. Okay, so with the internal angles again, we're going to look now at a regular equilateral triangle, mm -hmm. which is what these are. Yep. And so we know that all of these angles are going to be the same. And we also know that we can stack these triangles in such a way that this angle is going to be 180 degrees. Right, it's almost as if we have a straight line going across here, correct? Exactly. Okay. And so because we have three angles in 180 degrees, we can prove that each angle is 60 degrees. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we know we need six triangles to tile 360 degrees because six times 60 is 360. Perfect. So it's great to have these um, visual examples, but that's still something that we could figure out without the triangles in front of us then. It as is. Well. Okay. Yeah. Something that's cool though is that you don't need to tile with regular triangles. Oh, okay. You could tile with any triangle so long as you use the same one and you'd get this same sort of pattern. Is there a way to prove that? So there is a way that we can prove that any triangle will work, and it's the same way we proved that the internal angles of an equilateral triangle were 60 degrees all the way around. Mm -hmm. So what we can see when we pull these triangles out again is that if we have one of each corner in the middle, mm -hmm. that will always get with any triangle 180 degrees here. Okay. And so we can prove it, and also we can determine it using a formula. And that formula is the number of sides of your shape, minus 2, times 180 degrees. So for triangles, you have three sides, and then you subtract 2, 1, times 180 degrees. And so the sum of your internal angles is 180 degrees for a triangle. Okay, and then can we use that for other types of shapes, let's say a square? We can. So if we have a square here, if we pull one out, we have four sides, mm -hmm. and so if we subtract two, we get two, we multiply by 180 degrees, and we get 360 degrees. Okay, so in that formula that you're using, where's the 180 degrees coming from? The 180 degrees comes from the fact that any shape that we can make, we can divide into triangles. Okay. 
a certain number of them, not always the same triangle, but we can always break a shape down into triangles. And to show that, I'm going to pull out this rhombus here. And so you can see with this rhombus, if we split it in half, that now I have two triangles. Mm -hmm. And it's still a quadrilateral, so its sum of internal angles is still going to be 360 degrees. Right. So that's the rules of tessellation. Now it's worth looking here at, this is a regular tessellation. Mm -hmm. So this is one that repeats and also has the same edges. And there are three regular tessellations and one is with triangles. Okay, and then returning to the squares that we looked at mm -hmm. shortly earlier. And so another one is with squares. And so they look like that. So our last regular tessellation is with hexagons. So if we just move those over, and we lay down our hexagons here. Here we have our last regular tessellation. Interesting, and this is something seen in nature with honeycombs, right? It is. So hexagons tessellate really nicely. They leave no void space, and so nature really likes them for when it has to group things together. You can see it also in um, rocks sometimes with basalt columns when they're shrinking. Interesting. And they create this really efficient shape. Very cool. So these are our regular polygons tessellated, right? Yes. Okay, and then what about some irregular polygons? Should we look at some examples? Let's look at some of those. So I'm going to put away these regular tessellations so that we have some room to work. And these are trapezoids. So you can see with trapezoids that we can actually use them to make a hexagon here. Mm -hmm. And so we could tile them that way. We can also tile them like that. And so as you can see, this now is one, one tessellation, and this end would fit into here. So Peter, just to clarify, this would be the shared point of all of these shapes then, correct? Yes. Okay. But because it's not exactly the same, it's not a regular tessellation anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's with trapezoids. And now if we go over to rhombuses, we can see a similar thing happens here. where now that's our shared point. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not exactly the same. Not all the corners are the same. Okay. And that can also be replicated with these parallelograms. We see a lot of these types of patterns in tiling in kitchens and bathrooms, but also in clothing, we see patterns like this a lot. Mm -hmm. Your class, have you decided what pattern you're going to use? Hmm, I haven't said it quite yet, but I think I have a lot of great ideas now, thanks to this activity. Fantastic. Maybe even your kids could help. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs>